Hello and welcome to Josh Plays 40k debut video where I'll be painting today my High Fleet Leviathan Gene Steelers. So let's grab some brushes and get started. So after the model is primed in Corax White and you have done the initial basing of Screaming Skull, which gives it a nice sort of skin tone colour overall, we want to be adding the first shade which goes all over the entire miniature. And that is a mixture of two parts contrast medium to one part contrast Magos purple. And that will then give it the initial Gri uh, sort of grimy and alien feel to it. You might find, depending on how many models you're doing, you'll have to continuously mix, but that is just something to bear in mind when you're putting it all together. And don't worry if it looks a little bit messy when you're first putting it on the model, because it does dry lighter than you think. So literally just start by pushing it all over the model. And try not to let it pull in too many places where you don't want it but literally there is no area it can't go because either it gets covered up later on or you're highlighting over it with other colors so as i say don't worry but try not to clog up too many of the vents on his arms and his legs because again they will have another darker flesh tone to work with and once you've done that we'll move on to the next parts so after the initial shaders dry of the magos purple we're now looking to focus on the vents on his arms and the legs and then any crevices and cracks between them where the sort of flesh would be more prominent and you would want it to be a darker tone so that when you highlight those areas are going to pop better when the skin has its more pale tone put back to it like you would normally see on the Lothiathan box art. So to do that you want sort of one to two parts Volupus pink depending on how dark you want it to be. I tend to go for sort of something in the middle if I can. I sort of go one and then two if I really need it and then one part contrast medium just so that it's not too thick and doesn't clog up any of the art, sort of art trees if you like as to what you're looking at. So let's do that. I would recommend using a sort of slightly larger brush so I'm just using my shade brush for mixing but you will want something very of a fine detail brush, depending on what brand you go for, uh, to obviously apply it because the areas are very small. So you just want to get a little bit on your brush at any one time and apply it to the miniature. So you're looking at little sort of arm crevices that are there. Obviously try and be as neat as possible. You can obviously line up later and then obviously you can also put little bits in the face slots here as well if you want to just to darken those down a bit which makes it look obviously a little bit more flesh like but as I say just work your way around and anything that you feel you want to make a bit darker you can do and then let that dry and then we move on to the next step Okay, so now with the Volupus pink dried in the vents, we can start to highlight the skin. So first of all, we're going to want the layer paint Screaming Skull. And you are literally going to go over where the skin is at its highest, just to bring out some of the raised 
details and what you want to be doing is leaving the pinky purple undertone in the recesses and the darker areas and you just go around the model until you're happy that you've picked out all the good details and once you're happy with that we can then move on to the next highlight for the skin okay so with that first highlight of screaming skull applied and dried we want to move on to the second highlight for the skin which is pallid witch flesh and uh, depending on what kind of palette you're using if you're using uh, a standard palette obviously just make sure to thin the paint a little bit add a bit of water so that it's smooth it's a bit more smooth going on to the model uh, if you're using a wet palette obviously that kind of helps but it, i do find that still adding just a drop of water helps that uh, just smooth out again on the model uh, as you don't want this to appear too sort of clumped considering this is just a, a final highlight to really capture the details and you're only really looking to apply it where the model is at its most raised so the tops of these muscles here and around the vents you're not looking to do like a, a more heavy coverage like with the screaming skull but you are just putting it around where the light is likely to catch it the most so again like with screaming skull just work your way around nice and slowly taking your time not to go over any places you don't want it or into the vents and then we will come back once that's done and dried and look at getting some paint on the carapace for the back part and also just filling in a little a few details like little bones sticking out of the back of these arms and uh, and moving on okay so with the second highlight done on the skin we can move on to now starting the carapace at the back but just before we do that i would recommend just getting your skeleton horde contrast paint and just adding that in you don't have to thin this one down to the bony bits on the back of his arms if you're using rending claws obviously it just gives it a little touch and it breaks up the arm a little bit And then it's also a good idea, you can use a dash of skeleton horde on the teeth and the back of the mouth just to darken it off slightly. Not to worry if you get a little bit on the tongue, because we'll be putting another colour on that shortly. And then next, depending on how you want to do this, the carapace part on the back here, move, running down to the base of the spine, so this line here. I like to do in a purple, which sort of matches the rest of my Hive Fleet Leviathan army. However, I know that if you look at some of the box art and some other painters, they like to leave this a sort of white pinky colour in line with the rest of the skin. Obviously, the preference is completely up to you. However, I will be doing it with the purple and a purple highlights as well. So the purple we're going to use for this is Nagaroth Knight as the first base layer over the top. Now you will find quite likely that you will want two coats of this, just as it doesn't, as you're going over a light background underneath, it will find that it might not sit quite so rich and obviously you want a nice full color. Now you do obviously want to take your time so that you don't get any of this onto the skin that you have already painted, but if you do, you can go back and tidy up later. It is also worth noting to do the, depending on the heads you're using, to do this little strip down the middle here as well in the purple, obviously making sure you fill out and obviously be careful around the head. But once you've done all of that and that's nice and rich and fill, we'll come back and look at the next stages. So with the carapace now nicely full body purple. We can move on to just base coat a few smaller details. So the first one being the tongue. For this we use pink horror and you just want to coat the tongue nicely over with that. Just being careful for the teeth. Once that's done you can then just grab ironed in yellow which will do 
just a little dot in each eye which really makes them glow and it's a nice Xenos feel to it. Now with those two small details now base coated we'll move on to doing the claws and the talons and any other little bits coming out the side here and we're going to do those in the red and the red we're looking for is the contrast paint flesh terrors red now we won't be doing any thinning with this this is just straight from the pot as designed and you again just work your way around the model picking out the claws and then any little bony bit that stick out and not forgetting on the other again if you're using scything talons on the underside there are these little claws sticking out which again need to be base coated in red just be careful when you do those because obviously they are very small and you don't want to mess up the skin that you've already done so again as i say work your way around the model do them bits by bits and then we can move on to the next stage So with the red now done, we can move on to the final couple of shades before we then move on to highlighting the carapace, the red and the tongue on the model. So the first shade you want is Contrast Magos Purple and you just simply want to just pop that over the tongue just to darken the pink down and to add a little bit of depth to it as well and just to help increase the Xenos look to the model. Once that's done, we can then move on to shading the carapace. Now for that, it is just Nun Oil, again, straight from the pot. And you'll put that all over where we have put the Nagarov purple, so the little crescent on his head. Obviously try not to let it sit too heavy. And then all of the purple carapace on the back. It just helps give the purple some depth, ready for when we put the highlights over the top. So with the shade now dried over the purple, we are now ready to start highlighting that purple, which will be done in three stages. The first of which is Xeros purple, followed by a highlight again of Gene Steeler purple, and then a final edge highlighting just to catch those raised areas of Slanesh grey. So first of all, Xeros purple, and we're just looking for those raised areas. So what I usually do is I pick out these sort of spines that are sticking up and I just coat the brush over the top just to help them stand out from the base layer. With that first Xeros highlight applied, we'll then move on to the second highlight, which is Gene Steeler Purple. And this time, instead of capturing the entire raised area of these spines, we're just looking at taking just a little bit and a thinner line going down each one. Sort of give a bit of a gradient effect that the tips are slightly lighter than the rest of the carapace. What I also do is just capture the edges of the top spines and not forgetting the little part on his forehead, but just adding the smallest hint on each ring. So similarly to the Xeros purple, just work your way around the carapace. Take your time to be as neat as possible. With that second highlight applied, we now move on to the final highlight, which is Slanesh Grey. And this really is just a final small highlight on the edges of each spine where the light would hit them the most. Again, just catching the edges of the spines on the top. Not necessarily all of it like with the Gene Steeler Purple. And then also looking at the edge of the carapace where it meets the body of the model. Just very carefully running your brush on the edge to give that some further highlight and gradient into the model. You can also on the ridge if you want to add a small amount of this final highlight just to help bring that out but that is optional depending on your preferences. Okay, so with the purple now all highlighted and finished, we are ready to move on to highlighting all of the red claws 
and the scything talons that are coming out of the front. So similar to the purple, this will be in three stages. The first of which is a layer of Evil Sun's Scarlet, followed by Wild Rider Red, and then a very final tipped highlight of Troll Slayer Orange. So as I say, same as before, starting with Evil Sun's Scarlet, you just want to work your way around, pick an edge. I tend to find with edge highlighting, if you're new to it, that turning the model on the side and just using the side of the brush rather than trying to paint a line is so much crisper and neater. So once you're happy with those edge highlights, we'll then be ready to move on to the next stage. So with that first highlight applied to the red, we now move on to the Wild Rider Red for the second highlight. Now this time, instead of going all the way up the scything talon or up the claw, you would just pick a lower edge to go for. So sort of starting about midway and going towards the point and then on any claws as well. So similarly with the Evil Sun Scarlet, you just work your way around bit by bit until you're happy with the highlights that you've done. Okay, so with that second highlight applied, the last one we're looking for is Troll Slayer Orange. Now, similarly with the purple, this is just for the tips and to make the edges really pop. So you are just picking a lower edge and adding that on and obviously on the inside as well, where the light is at its strongest. And the same with the claws. So really just the tips that you're looking to get coated. So just work your way around the model until you're happy with the highlights that you've done. Now the final highlight we are going to apply is just a Emperor's Children edge highlight to the tongue, just to help make that pop with the rest of the model. So just down the edges on the tip, just to add that finishing touch following the shading we did earlier. And there we have a finished painted jean stealer. The only thing left to do now is to do the basing. Now, basing is obviously very personal choice. And obviously you would do that to however best befits the story to your high fleet. But I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.